This is the scene of a wedding banquet in a rural village. Attending a wedding is supposed to be a good opportunity for friends and family to get together, but it has turned into a mad scramble for food. Because the people who came believe since they gave a large amount of gift money, they always have to eat more and take more to get their worth. Some people even start fights and argue while snatching food. The bride and groom's friends and relatives initially came to the banquet to celebrate the new couple, but end up turning against each other for food. Early October of every year is China's long holiday, so many young people often hold weddings during this time. After all, marriage is a good thing to celebrate, but it becomes a heavy psychological and financial burden for friends and relatives. They can't afford it, especially the young people and low income earners. These wedding invitations, which people call red bombs, can be received from seven or eight couples during the holiday. Ten years ago, the standard amount of gift money was 200 to 300 yuan, which is around 30 to 40 US dollars. But now, most start from 500 yuan. And if you have good relations with the bride and groom, you have to increase it to 800 yuan or even 1,000 yuan. Last year's October, a person named Mr. Lei from Guizhou province trended on social media for having to participate in 23 weddings during the holiday. China is a society that emphasizes networks and relationships, and giving gift money is a way to bond and strengthen relationships. It's a Chinese tradition to give back a favor you receive, but with the development of society, the meaning of gift money has somewhat changed. Doing what you can and showing a genuine gesture of congratulations has become a monetary measurement of friendship. The ever-increasing burden also makes many young people miserable. On Weibo and Zhihu platforms, topics such as how much should I give for my childhood friend's wedding, classmate is getting married, how much gift money is appropriate, how much money should I gift for someone born after 1990, and how to avoid giving gift money has received a high number of views and likes. The amount of money for cash gifts varies from region to region and from one social class to another. In 2017, an organization created a national wedding red envelope map, that is, the average amount of wedding gift money in the country. Zhejiang and Shanghai ranked first among the provinces in the country with 1,000 yuan, around 155 US dollars. Shandong and Beijing are also not low. Even Xinjiang is up there with 600 yuan, and there are only a few regions below 500 yuan. The economically developed Guangdong province and the relatively behind Yunnan province are at the bottom with 100 yuan. The significance of the gift money will gradually increase with the closeness of the relationship. According to data, close relatives getting married require the largest amount of gift money, with an average of 1,248 yuan, followed by close friends, classmates, and colleagues, with an average of 740 yuan. As for not-so-close friends and acquaintances, they cannot be outright rejected, so in order to save face, a minimum of 200 yuan will be given. Seeing these numbers, we might as well do some simple calculations. The average monthly salary in Beijing in 2018 is 7,855 yuan. And after deducting the monthly Social Security Provident Fund and living expenses, the monthly balance is about 1,500 yuan. If you receive a wedding invitation, the gift money is calculated according to 500 yuan. And then, if you attend the wedding that might be hosted in another city, you will have to pay for travel expenses, calculated to be around 700 yuan. So a trip to the wedding would be at least 1,200 yuan, leaving about 300 yuan in savings. This means that very little is left from the hard-earned monthly income after attending a wedding. Once the weddings, Chinese New Year, and other festive days pile up, it is really easy to see how you can break the bank. Let's look at the spending situation of an average middle-income family. A mainland media reporter interviewed Mr. Zhao from Beijing. During this year's holiday, Mr. Zhao and his wife gave out 4,400 yuan in wedding red envelopes, 2,000 yuan for his sister, 1,000 for his cousin, 1,000 more for his college classmate, 200 for his colleague, 200 for his friend, plus 200 for a gift from one of his wife's college classmates who gave birth, for a total of 4,600 yuan, around 700 USD. This created a serious imbalance between his income and expenditure for the month. So far this year, his expenses on accompanying gifts totaled 10,077 yuan, 
if he had his expected expenditure of 1,000 yuan, 500 to visit teachers before the New Year's, and another two recent wedding red envelopes of 500 yuan, the gift money this year total about 11,000 yuan. And the annual income of both Mr. Zhao and his wife is about 130,000 yuan. Gift money expenses account for 8.5% of the family's annual income. Among them, wedding red envelopes total 5,800, accounting for 52.4% of the gift money and about 4.5% of the family's annual income. According to the income breakdown record, Mr. Zhao's family earned a total of 26,400 yuan in gift money this year, of which 19,800 were from wedding red envelopes, accounting for 75% of the total. Although the gift money received this year seems to have made a profit, Mr. Zhao said, when I think about it later, it cannot be really calculated this way. The red envelopes are like a loan. Sooner or later, you have to pay it back. The times have changed. Prices are rising, and it makes sense that gift money will rise with it. If it's for a close friend, even if the gift money goes up every year, people are happy to give it. After all, there is a chance to get it back, as there is a social obligation to return the favor. But with the expansion of young people's social network, with relationships spread all over the world, some relationships are surface level. Superficial banquets are also becoming increasingly common. People from the working class are more and more reluctant to pay for gifts using their hard-earned money. And the most difficult situation for them to face is when the company's boss gets married. If you don't give money, people will gossip, and it may even affect future promotions and raises. If you do give money, it simply won't do if you give too little. Some young people choose to resign because they don't want to send gift money to their leaders. 24-year-old Xin Yi is one of them. She originally had the intention of leaving the company because she often has to work overtime, not to mention the low pay, and the fact that the staff often have to take the blame for many things. But she didn't expect her leave to be expedited because of a wedding. The one who is going to get married is her supervisor. Xin Yi was not on good terms with him, so when she learned of his wedding, she didn't plan on attending. However, the supervisor took the initiative to invite Xin Yi to the wedding. Xin Yi had thought that even if she would resign soon, this is supposed to be a happy occasion, so even if she didn't show up, she would still transfer the money directly to her boss. She never thought that a project would fail and the supervisor would throw all the blame on her. When she thought of the grievances she suffered in this company, she thought that if I don't leave now, in a few days I will still need to give gift money to my boss. Therefore, Xin Yi quickly proposed to leave, and chose the departure date to be the day of the wedding. Her supervisor replied, I have approved your resignation. Are you still coming to the wedding? In the end, Xin Yi didn't reply to him. The most pitiable are graduate and doctoral students whose undergraduate classmates are getting married one after another. The high amount of gift money forces these low-income students who are already dependent on state subsidies and parental allowances to borrow money. Some netizens said that one of the things that modern people fear the most is that friends and relatives who have been separated for many years suddenly contact you. Classmates who haven't contacted each other for 10 years suddenly add you as a friend on social media, and chances are they're about to get married. There are also distant relatives who you have never met, ex-colleagues you're not familiar with, and younger siblings of old classmates. Many random relationships will also have to be gifted for. On Zhihu, a popular Q&A platform, under the post, what is the weirdest invitation you have ever received? People responded that even things like buying a new car and pigs giving birth have become an excuse for gift money. The young people in China are under a lot of pressure to survive. If they give a lot, they're left with very little. If they were to give very little, they are worried about losing face. In the end, it becomes an awkward ritual for everyone. Relationships should be friendly and healthy, but because of the monetary element, it has become very superficial and unbearable. According to data, urban families in China spend no less than 6,000 yuan per year on gifts, and the average Chinese household spending on gifts accounts for as much as 7.9% of the total household income. Rural families spend as much as 11.4% of their total income on gifts while families of the lower 25% of urban income levels spend up to 45.1% of their total income on gifts. Perhaps for the rich, these spendings may be equivalent to buying a fancy watch or a brand name suit, 
But for poor families, spending on relationships can only be described as debt made of blood and tears. The competitiveness of low-income families in the marriage market, especially those in rural areas, depends to a large extent on their social status and reputation. In order to build a good reputation, maintain relationships with neighbors, and thus find good spouses for their children in the future, these families have to pay a high amount of money for favors. Rural families in the lowest 25% of income, especially those with unmarried children of school age at home, spend an average of 3,139 yuan on favors, which is three-fourths of the annual income of 4,082 yuan per rural resident in the poor areas in 2019. In recent years, we have seen some reports that farmers in some remote areas even sell their cattle and land to pay for gift money. There was a survey on the expenditure of people in a remote rural area in China and found that 41%, 29%, and 20% of farmers in three administrative villages respectively relied on blood sales to increase their income. Most of the farmers confessed that they had to sell blood so that they could prepare for their son's wedding houses, organize weddings, and pay for gift money. Gift money in China comes in many different forms and is not limited to attending weddings. For example, gift money is required for moving to a new house, giving birth to a child, celebrating a child's or elder's birthday, or the funeral of a friend or relative. In recent years, parents of children who are admitted to college have also held banquets, and relatives and friends have to join the party. And this money, although not comparable to the amount for weddings, is still a large sum of the family's expenses. Officials at all levels of the Chinese Communist Party use this gift money excuse to benefit themselves and their family members on various occasions such as weddings, funerals, marriages, birthdays, promotions, military enlistments, job transfers, moving to new homes, illnesses, and hospitalizations. In the second half of 2017, during the funeral of his father, Li Yuequiang, former party secretary and director of the Lingao County, Hainan province, received a gift of 20,000 yuan from a shareholder of an investment company. In August 2005, Tang Jinlin, then deputy director of the finance bureau of Yongxing County, Hunan province, held a banquet to celebrate his daughter's admission to university. Some companies and individuals came to congratulate him on the day of the banquet. A total of 20 banquet tables were prepared, and 181 gifts totaling over 74,000 yuan were received, of which 7 gifts totaling 6,400 yuan were received from 7 companies, including the County Disabled Persons Federation. He received 16 gifts totaling 12,700 yuan from subordinates within his supervisory scope, and from individuals who were related to his administrative authority. Although the CCP has introduced bans to prevent party members and cadres from using the banquet as an opportunity to amass wealth, it has now been able to stop some of them from making money out of various events. Gift money is still the most public but safest way for some of them to amass wealth. This is because there is no clear provision in Chinese law or judicial interpretation that prohibits this. Even if such a thing happens, it can only be considered as a violation of party discipline and the biggest penalty will be a warning from the party.